President Biden is warning that Russia's President Vladimir Putin's next escalation could be a direct cyber attack against the U.S. I spoke with a threat analyst about how businesses and individuals can be on the lookout. President Biden has warned of a potential Russian cyber attack against the United States. So how can we protect ourselves? Joining us now is threat analyst at Huntress Labs, John Hammond. And John, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with me. Why do you think the president's new warning is so significant? Well, thank you so much for the opportunity to come spend some time with you all here. Uh, seeing the new messaging from the president on the potential of, hey, exploring options from Russia on cyber threats and attacks against the United States is certainly a, a bit of a scare, but I don't know if this is news or some earth-shattering thing to a lot of folks. I think, hey, this, this doesn't come as quite a surprise. Uh, but it is, in my mind, a, a good thing to see this proactive messaging. It is great to see this preemptive preparation and that, hey, we need to alert everyone. We need to uh, bring shields up in both private sectors, in both public government, etc., to get this thing locked down because it's not going to happen in a silo. This right. does take everyone playing in concert. He wants companies, uh, federal agencies, government offices everywhere to really shore up their security, uh, backing up all kinds of information. If there were to be a cyber attack on our infrastructure, what would that look like? Ooh, it, it's it's hard to say, uh, mm -hmm. and it's very easy to extrapolate. Hey, I, I realize. Look, I don't have a crystal ball. Can't see the future. Right. Um, but uh, I, I don't like the idea of it. Right. Uh, some folks that might not be all in the know can sort of thump their chest and say, "Hey, bring it on!" You know, the United States is ready for a, a cyber war, uh, and that is absolutely not the case. We are not in the shape to fight that fight. Uh, not only the physical effects, sure, consider, hey, you're losing power, you're not having the lights on. Uh, there's real risk of endangering human necessities, but the mental effects from that, the misinformation at such a large scale and gravity and severity of that, what could you trust at that point when it is, this is the information era, the technology age that we live in? What if you can't trust the news that you might receive or, hey, mm -hmm. the information you get from the cell phone you hold in your hand? Right. We've certainly seen these kind of tactics so far over the last three weeks in Ukraine. It feels as though the Cold War is morphing into a digital war. Uh, what can companies do to harden their defenses? Absolutely. Uh <laughs> I, I wish I could come and say, hey, some, you know, ground, groundbreaking uh, new hot thing to bring a solution to folks. Uh, but ultimately, this boils down to the bare bone basics and cybersecurity hygiene. It sounds so trite when you hear cybersecurity professionals say this over and over and over again. But the reason we do is because it's the best thing you can do. Mm. Long, complex passwords, secure, hey, MFA everywhere. You know the drill. But ultimately... I, I reiterate that and we underscore that all the times because there are so many businesses, small to mid market, of course, and even some hey, larger enterprise corporations that don't have that in place. Uh, having the incident response plan, having the business continuity plan, the disaster recovery, all of this should have been put together maybe a year ago. That's the best time. The second best time is now. Now is not the time to let our guard down. Now is the time to really get into this. Right. It's always back to basics, right? From what I understand, we are talking about the potential for high-level interference, right, of some sort of federal agency uh, or, you know, a, a big company. But should individuals be taking steps? You know, should we be t protecting ourselves? We know, uh, as you say, about complex passwords, not clicking on links we don't recognize. Is there anything else individuals should be doing to just be on the lookout for any kind of interference? You, you said a, a key word there, and I'm very happy you kind of clued it in. Is, hey, the best that we can do is be on the lookout, be vigilant, and keep our ears to the ground of the threat information, the threat intelligence, hey, whether it's if it, information and computers that you might end up working with on a day-to-day -day basis, what software pops up? What do you use? That's kind of the best thing is having your own inventory and asset list of what applications and what assets do I work with on a day-to-day -day basis? Are there any new emerging threats and vulnerabilities in those 
software suites and those mm. tools. Uh, be in the know. You absolutely need to be a part of this. Cybersecurity is a hard thing because it's constant. It's a heartbeat. There's really a pulse to it. And it's not something we can just sort of put a castle and a moat around and say, hey, it's done. We've solved it. This is something we have to earn every day, yeah. all of us. I was just thinking once upon a time it was loose lips sink ships. Now we should warn people that a strange link should make you blink or something like that. I'll, I'll come up with the poster. All right, John Hammond, threat analyst from Huntress Labs. We appreciate your expertise. Thanks so much.